A wonderful person, this is Anton, and in this video we're going to discuss a discovery of an extremely unusual galactic jet that currently does not make a lot of sense. And that's because it's the largest galactic jet we've ever discovered, in some sense making this galaxy the largest discovered to date. And you see the simulation of this jet right here. And though it's not easy to see how big this is, it's actually 23 million light years from one end to the other. And that's of course the biggest such structure we've ever seen. Even bigger than the discovery we discussed only a couple of years ago in a galaxy referred to as Alcyon S. You can learn about this discovery in one of the previous videos in the description. But before we talk about the recent discovery, let's actually start with the mystery itself. Even today we still have no idea how these jets are produced. Ok, we maybe have some idea based on various simulations and based on very precise observations in X-rays, infrared and radio light, but these models do not explain some of these unusual anomalies discovered in just the last few years. Especially because in many cases there is just way too much energy produced here with the material in these jets moving extremely close to the speed of light. And though the true mechanism is obviously unknown, we do have basic understanding based on a lot of observations with radio telescopes. For example, the observations from the iconic Event Horizon Telescope, especially from some of the biggest and most powerful such black holes, such as the one you see right here from the Perseus A, definitively reveal extremely powerful magnetic fields based on a lot of polarization. And these magnetic fields must be formed by very powerful accretion disks. And so as a lot of matter falls into the black hole and starts to form the accretion disk that orbits around it, moving faster and faster and producing highly energetic interactions, the closer to black holes they get, this also results in the production of magnetic lines. And that's because a lot of this infoing matter is also magnetized, eventually producing an extremely magnetic but also very compact disk. But this disk becomes magnetically arrested. In other words, all of this magnetism is basically trapped. And though these lines do become trapped inside the disk, since the accretion disk spins around the black hole, these lines also become entangled. And so eventually these magnetic lines become so twisted and so entangled that they basically snap, overcoming the gravity hold of the black hole. And it's this unusual snapping process that potentially produces these humongous and powerful jets. But this is not a constant phenomenon and to some extent is more akin to a kind of a broken engine producing puffs of smoke once in a while. Which is kind of what we actually see if we do zoom in on these jets and observe them in detail. We don't really see a constant emission and instead we see a bunch of clouds moving at very high velocities. And so the evidence from Perseus A, the black hole that you see behind me, provided enough evidence to explain all of this. This black hole is spinning very fast it has an extremely magnetized environment, which then results in relatively large jets, but not as large as the ones we're discussing today. And it actually beats all of the previous record holders by a huge margin, actually forming one of the biggest structures in the entire universe, and a structure that's kind of difficult to explain. And that's because when it comes to these radio galaxies, or these extremely long radio jets, scientists always believed that there was a kind of a limit with the size limit basically being about 5 million light years. Mostly because with distance these jets eventually fall apart as they start interacting with gas and a lot of additional material in the nearby intergalactic space. But Martin Oi and his team accidentally discovered a somewhat difficult to detect but still definitely visible 23 million light year long galactic jet. This is the image produced in radio light. And just for a comparison, you can kind of see the Milky Way galaxy in the bottom right corner. And though officially this galaxy has a relatively long name, it's now also known as Porphyrion, officially making this the largest known galactic structure that beats the previous record holder Alcyon S that was actually discovered by um, the same person. And this was actually not the only such discovery, this was one of several different galaxies with really large jets discovered by this team. Basically implying that this is not an anomaly and not an exception. This actually seems to be a regular process that occurs in a lot of galaxies that once again kind of violates the modern cosmological ideas. And though obviously we still believe it's produced in a very similar way through the entanglement of powerful magnetic lines, 
Right now it's unclear why it doesn't fall apart even after 20 million light years of travel and why it still appears to be kind of straight. But one of the reasons we've never seen these galaxies before is because most of them are pretty far away. This one is about 7.5 billion light years away from us when the universe was just half of its current age. And because we're seeing this when the universe was much younger and thus a little bit thicker and a little bit denser, it actually makes even less sense. We technically expect much shorter jets in the much earlier universe just because there is more gas and more matter to interact with. And so to produce something very straight and very long, you essentially need a lot of empty space. And here the only explanation that makes sense and the one provided in the study involves the cosmic web. The enormous structure and the enormous filament across the whole universe where basically most of the galaxies reside. But between the filaments there are these cosmic voids. You can learn more about this concept in one of the videos in the description, including the video about the so-called local void. But in essence we know that this cosmic web connects the entire universe and most galaxies, especially very massive, very powerful galaxies, are usually somewhere at the crossroads. And so it's possible that some of these jets are just pointed in such a way that instead of going into the cosmic web, they basically go into the voids. And so as long as the black hole is feeding constantly for at least several hundred million years or even a billion years, like in this case, it should have enough material to produce an enormous jet that's going to remain constant and straight as long as it's going through this void. And the only reason this jet is stable and does not dissipate with distance is maybe because it's in that void. Although in reality, right now this is actually one of the bigger mysteries. Nobody knows how it's able to maintain its strength and how it's able to maintain its relatively straight profile. But because this is not the first such discovery, it means that this is a relatively common phenomenon. Phenomenon that appears to be the result of really powerful magnetic fields and very powerful black hole emissions that produce jets millions of light years in length, way way above the official limits. But naturally this also gives us just a little bit of a clue about the structure of the universe itself. And so here the researchers believe that this jet is about 66% the total radius of the void where this galaxy is located. Which first of all shows us how big these voids were when the universe was only about 6.5 billion years old, while also suggesting that these jets maybe shaped the cosmic web as well. For example here the scientists believe that they're also responsible for a strange increase in temperature discovered in various voids across the universe. And they can also explain certain magnetic interactions and certain magnetic fields that have been discovered inside voids as well. So basically this could be coming from these massive jets, it just, it's never really been seen until now. And this of course means that this is maybe an extremely common phenomenon that ends up enriching these voids and even changing their properties, while also maybe affecting the cosmic web to some extent as well. But because these are very recent discoveries and because a lot of this is actually still kind of difficult to see, we're probably not going to know much more until future studies. Especially because this is really technically just the second such official detection and so until additional observations with even more powerful telescopes, we're just not going to know much more. But right now the implication is that these extremely powerful jets very likely pump so many electrons and so many atomic nuclei into the intergalactic medium that they actually end up dramatically changing the distribution of matter around the cosmic web, possibly resulting in maybe different galaxies and different stars being produced in certain regions. Now that's just an assumption for now, but as you might have learned from one of the previous videos in the description, we know that powerful black holes and powerful quasars can actually dramatically shift everything around themselves, even killing all galaxies within several million light years away. You can learn about all of this in one of the videos in the description. But when it comes to these powerful jets or these unusually long structures, we'll definitely come back and talk more about this most likely within the next few months, obviously when there are new discoveries. Until then, thank you for watching, check out previous videos in the description below, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow and as always, bye bye.